watching No to Nine. Hello, and welcome to No to Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 196, No Dependency Page Controllers in Next Pages. Yeah, we're talking about this again. And we will again. Um, okay, so um, this show is comes from MWLUG 2016, the great event that was just held in Austin. Uh, I've lost count if this is my fourth or fifth notes nine coming from my presentation, where quite arguably I, I bit off more than I could chew, and uh, I was talking really fast in the end. Uh, let's just leave it at that. Um, oh, so it's, um, everything on this presentation is available in GitHub. Just grab it. Um, if you don't know how to build it from source control, uh, uh, figure it out or watch one of my videos or ask me for help. Uh, and I will, and I'll probably even do another show at some point just on that. Um, but again, it's we've covered this many times before. Um, you, you know, you grab source tree from Atlassian, you should be able to uh, build from source code uh, pretty easily. Okay, so uh, page controllers. Th these are important, and we're going to be talking about this again and again and again, um, and, and it's, it's not going to stop. So um, I, I can only suggest that you get on board, uh, because if you want to, you know, survive as a developer, um, some things are going to have to start to change, I think. We're going to talk about that uh, in a couple more shows or so. But but it, it gets, they allow you to get closer to real MVC, model view controller, which is what everybody else does, uh, just about, uh, as far as I know. Um, and that's the way you want to be. You want to get the separation from your, your business logic and your UI logic and stuff like that. Um, you want to get the JavaScript off your XSPX page. It doesn't belong there. It's yes, you can do it, uh, but you shouldn't do it. You want the separation of your UI data and logic. It's it's easier to work with these X pages when when it's just the XML tags for the most part, with with just you know little you know server side JavaScript calls to a, a Java page controller. And again, Java is not that hard. If I learned it, you can, and I will help you as best as I can. Um, we've got a bunch of shows out, and again, if you get stuck, uh, the Stack Overflow, email me, join the Slack chat, the XPages Slack chat. We will get you help or so. This is where you want to be if you want to continue being a developer, in my opinion, and we're, that's just more foreshadowing for the future. Um, the page controller is a great place to put globally available functions. So you write a function once, and now it's available throughout all your pages or certain pages. There's functions for certain pages. Um, it's less reliant on managed beans inside the face config. What is a page controller? It's basically a view scope managed bean specific to the page, but it, there are ways to get around not having to go in the face config. You know, and not have a, an entry in the face of config for every page. You could do that, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, I just typically don't do that. Uh, one of the biggest wins is no more just random view scope variables that you throw on the page, you know, to control rendering or hold a value or so. Uh, forget about the view scope variables when you can just add a method to the page controller. So again, all the controller is is just an in-memory bean you know, or plain old Java Java object to control your page logic. So all your logic goes on there. So you have separation between your your page logic, the page UI, and then your your model logic uh, too. Uh, okay, so dependencies. Usually when I do this, and I I argue the best way to get into the page controllers is with uh, Jesse Gallagher's. Um, uh, X pages. I think it's technically called the X pages scaffolding library. Uh, the package name is Frostilicus, uh, which is a Simpsons reference. And I've told him several times that that name sucks uh, because I always have to think three times on how to spell it. Um, but the problem with it is it's a great library, though. It, it's great. It automates a lot of things for you. It does a lot more for you than, than I even use of the page controller. So page controllers is just a piece of it. But the problem is, is that you have to install it on the server. Um, and some admins uh, suck and don't let you do that, and there's stupid policies and all there. So, so this show is for you. If you can install it on the server, there's no excuse not to at least start the page control um, uh, journey, uh, as it were. Um, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to throw a panel on the page, and that panel is going to encompass the entire page. So you have an X page. Everything goes inside this panel, and all we're going to do is, is tie a data source to that panel, and that's going to become our page controller. Um, and this is this is when I did this show a little while ago. I think it was in the 180s or so. 
like that. I didn't realize this. So I, I was doing the, the faces config thing, and I think Paul Withers told me, you know, Dave, you, you could just use a panel and, and pretty much get the, the same effect. And I like that because it's so it, it's so just fluid, I guess. You know, the, the Java class doesn't have to be the same name as the page. You know, you can point to anything you want, and it, it just kind of makes a lot of sense, and it's easy to trace because the call to the, the Java object is on the page. Okay, so it's a good way to do it. It's a good way to get started if, if you um, uh, can't get that library on. Uh, but you, you lose a, a couple of the automatic bits that Jesse has going for you, and, and you, I believe you, you, you pretty much lose the binding to before page load um, because the pages are already loaded at that point. Um, but I, I maintain that it's still better to do it this way than not do page controllers at all. So if you haven't gotten into page controllers, start thinking of using this approach and if you have trouble with the Java, let me know, and we'll see what we can do. Okay, there's there, there are resources out there to help you. Yes, it's that important. Okay, so how do you set it up? The controller is just one Java class, and Java, again, is not that unlike Lotus Script uh, in some ways. Uh, it's just syntax is different. You're still going to use the same backend objects. So you, you create your, your Java class, and then for a given X page, you're going to throw this one panel on that encompasses the whole page, and then you're going to create an object data binding to that panel, um, and, and this is the code that it looks like. So object data, you, we're going to give it a name, and we're going to try to standardize on controller as the variable name. Uh, because, well, one, that's what Jesse uses, and if he uses it, it's got to be good. Um, and two, it just makes sense, you know, so it's the controller. So inside there in the create object business, uh, we're just going to create a temp variable. So var temp equals new controller dot messages in, in this code example. And, and this would be for a page, an X page called messages. But again, the names don't have to match. And then we're going to call um, most of my controllers have like a little page init uh, method in there to just set up the page and you can do a lot of things in there you can check to see is this an anonymous user or not um, and if it's like anonymous and you could you could redirect them to a login page you know you could um, you know capture the current user's name and his groups and his roles and and just have that ready to go if you need it uh, you get all sorts of stuff um, and then finally we've returned this object this temp object that we create and now it's it's in effect, it's, it's in effect a view scoped bean that's that is not created through the faces config. Okay, so this object is now just there for the life of the page. And and how do you access the controller? And I darn it, I should have fixed this. I noticed this in my presentation. So I've got this little um, XP text, and I have controller dot my method. And it really, I, it really should have been more of a getter. It should be like my field name would have been a better example than my method. Um, so. So that is EL or expression language, and you can use SSJS, and you can just call it like that. And, and the, the advantage of EL is if you've got a get and set for the method name, or I mean not for the for the field name or var that you want to store, is it, you know, if you're in read mode or, or edit mode, it'll figure that out for you. So that's just one of the advantages of EL if you didn't already know that. So it's very easy to use. Okay, so here's here's the whole business about this. So so let's look at this Java object relationship stuff. So what I like to do, and don't get scared about this because this, this isn't too bad, and I'm going to show you this code. We're going to do a code walkthrough. Um, is I like to start with this abstract object. Okay, so this is, this is my first most base object. It should know nothing about the UI, and it should know nothing about my data. It's just for like utility functions. So I like to put in um, some uh, utility functions to print. Okay, because who likes to type out like system dot out dot print line or, or whatever it is? I don't even remember. Um, and I know there's a shortcut control space, I think it is, or control period. I, f I forget. Uh, I think it's control space. If you type CISO control space in the editor, that'll help you get there. But I like to call something, I like to call it like this dot console or, or a method even called print. So in my Java, I could actually use a, use a print method to print to the console. So, so this would go in the abstract object. And one of the advantages of doing it in the abstract object here is, one, it's going to be available to every object that you build off this. Um, and then, two, for, if I wanted to put some logic into my, my print method to say print, print on the development server but do not print on production servers and, and piss off your admin, uh, I can do that. And then we've actually done that in the day job, and it works. So that's the abstract object. So just... Base basic things can go in there, and we're, again, we're going to look at this. Um, then I create a base page controller, 
Okay, so this is code that you want on every page. So now, now you can kind of get into the UI for here. You can kind of get into the current user and stuff like this. So this is a great place to just always grab your current user, grab your URL parameters or have methods in there to get that so because you never know what page you might want that on. And then finally, you would extend that. So, so base page controller extends abstract, abstract object. And the specific page controller extends the base page control. It's almost like a cascading style sheet is all it is. Um, so there is where you would put the code you want for the specific page. All the page logic, you know, no more no more view scope variables because you can turn them into into getters and setters, into methods. Okay, so let's let's look at this this code walkthrough here. Okay, we don't need this. Okay, so here's my um, abstract object okay so now all my stuff right or wrong just Im implements serializable or import serializable I've got that set up you still have to do it on each level um, for some reason but I, I just always just do that because it's needed but here's a method that's in here console okay and and it's all it is is system out print line so I can do console um, and then send whatever message I want in and it's gonna get printed to the console but it's not just gonna get printed to the console the the method name uh, that's calling it will get printed from the console. So the class, not the, not the method name, I guess, but the class that's calling it will get printed to the console. So that's kind of nice. So when you have a lot of print statements in there, you you know exactly what class it is, or in this case, you know which con page controller is going to be printing that. Um, so that that is actually pretty handy. And if I get lazy and I just wanted to kind of do the same thing as JavaScript or so, I got print as an alternate method. So I can do console or print. Uh, I typically do do console or because that's just what we use at the day job. Um, and then in the spirit of no dependencies, these are just a couple of methods in here uh, that we got from Tim Tripconi's uh, JSF util, uh, which we. We could have imported that, but again, I, I wanted no de dependencies, so I just copied them in here. Uh, easy ways to get through the faces con context and the XSP context. Okay, not much going on here. We can add a whole lot more if we wanted to. Okay, so now here is my base page controller. So let's look at this. So I extend my abstract object, which means anywhere in here I can do this dot console, you know, print this. And that will print, even though this method is not inside this object. It's because it's extended. Uh, okay, so I've got some little documentation here. So again, the, what my setup will not, I don't think, hook into the before page load. Um, but uh, I do use this page init. So all this is doing right now, assuming the page init gets called, like I showed you in that slide, is it will hold on to the username. And this is, it will get the common name of, of the user. And it will run this load user data. And it's going to hold on to, I've got a list of strings. So this is going to give me a list of the user's groups and the user's roles. And kind of handy to have, you know, on, on time. So I could do have a has role method in here. I might even have that in here. Yeah, look, has role. See, uh, I love the outline tab. Okay, so this get message, we'll talk about that in another show. But this is my, my way of kind of get messages into bootstrap alerts on the page. Um, I've got a little handy thing here to redirect to a page inside Java, um, which is actually a little more of a pain than you think it would be, but but this should uh, solve that problem. So if you want to use Java logic, let's say let's say in the page in it, we wanted to do a check to see if a person is in a group, right? And then if he's not in the group, we would we would send them to another page, you know, because maybe this page is secure. Now again, this is the base page controller that should be done on on the specific page controller, but uh, hopefully you get you get the point. Um, so here's a method for oh I should I got an email from Warner Brothers Home Entertainment. A real podcaster would turn that crap off. Um, so let's do that. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I've got has role. I've got a way to get the parameters of the URL and this is a great thing here so this came up in the X pages slack chat you are a member I hope um, the other day is is it's possible for it's almost like a like a I don't know if it's, it's not an SQL injection but but a data injection in the URL you know if, if you're not careful so this should anytime they get a parameter from the URL this should strip out you know uh, this little you know the, the dollars the pound and the brackets um, or the curly brackets which could you know 
if someone like tried to pass in like JavaScript code into a parameter, it, it could ruin my day. Um, so someone was blogging about that recently. I, I forget his name, but again, this is um, just a good way to do it. I guess you gotta protect your data. Um, get query strings. So this is um, just like a little helper. This is public. It could be private um, because this get query st string is called from here. So I wouldn't normally call this. I just go right after the parameters. Um, so again, that could probably maybe be private. And then this add breadcrumb thing that'll probably come in another show. But I, this is basically code. I've got a, a managed bean. Now this is an actual faces config managed bean in here. And so on a specific page, I can call add breadcrumb. And what this does is it figures out what page it's on, and then it just adds a, a link to to this managed bean in memory. So I can have a drop down of like your like five recent pages you visited and stuff like that, just to try to help in the navigation and all that. So uh, hopefully we'll talk about that later. All right, so I'll save that for some reason. Okay, and then finally, here's a controller um, for um, force logout. Let's just look at this one. Okay, so all this one is, is so if I look at this force logout page, which we looked at in a couple shows ago, um, I've got this panel here, the container. Here's my object data. Um, and actually, this is, this is the wrong one. This should be force logout. Uh, see, this is why we double check our work. Um, so again, assuming this works, um, then all that's going to happen is it's going to call this page init, and then the page init. Oh, that's why it didn't work in the demo. Oh, that makes sense then. Um, so the page init will say add this breadcrumb force logout, uh, and that's the name to it. And let's actually let's actually do that um, now. I'll, I'll refresh here. Because, oh, now we're going off script. Not that I ever have a script, but uh, not intend for this to happen. So. Let's come back here, and then we're going to refresh this. Let's see if this works. Okay, so notice there's nothing here, okay? I'm going to go to this force logout page, and something popped up. Now, I'm going to come right back to home, otherwise it will log me out, um, and come here. So, force logout. So, so now I can start, like, the last five pages or so, if we go to this messages one, and then let's say we come back here. So now there's both. So this is the most recent one. I think if I come back here, it will j jump in order. See that? So now we're getting to the um, this little like history kind of thing, and it's almost free. All we now that we've set up our page controllers, all we have to do is call the page in it and put you know we call the super. So this calls the the base um, the the page in it for the base controller, which does that user business, and then one line. Gives us this bean, um, which is coming coming in here. I guess we'll look at that now. Um, you know, which has some functionality here to determine whether it should appear or not in the nav bar. Um, has this add link functionality. Um, I thought there's another add, but I guess not. Um, yeah, I guess not. Okay, so so that's all it does. So so you get advanced functionality for not a lot of work now. So for every page. We can add this on, and you're done, right? So, and, and again, you can expand this. We've expanded this a, a lot at the day job stuff. This, this is how you want to build your applications with these page controllers. And uh, I think that's all I had to say about that. Well, let's just look at one more X page here. This, this message is one, which will come to another show. But again, this is the exact same thing. So this is a controller messages calls page in it, and then the the setup in here, if we go to this page in it, again, there's going to be a show, it's probably the next show actually, but this is going to be, you know, it's going to set up some values and stuff like here and, and all that. It's going to allow us to, to get the, the both of these, these values and all we're doing is we're calling the controller to get all this logic here. Okay? It's a great way to live. And that's, that's the code walkthrough, and I, I guess that was kind of a little mini demo. Um, so there you have it. Uh, here's my contact information if you have any questions, and I thank you for your time.